So online participants are we connected? Jaspal Singh and Jawahar, are you there? He corrected hai. Yes, okay. Oh, you can speak. Unmute yourself and you can speak so that others can also hear. Okay, so <clears throat> yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Actually, we don't have mics uh, in our system. I just hand up to my phone and I'm speaking. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. So just I was just checking whether you are there or not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. <laughs> so uh, just before tea break, we had a talk by uh, Professor Banerjee on the transport of intensity equation. Now I'm going to talk about some of the applications of the holography or digital holography rather, not only the holography. So one of the applications what I have mentioned here is the three-dimensional object recognition. As you know, so as you know that uh, this digital holography is a technique for 3D imaging. If we combine this 3D imaging technique for uh, different purposes like uh, recognition of the object, every object what we see is three dimensional in nature. But when you take a picture, it becomes two dimensional. So we have to have the recognition technique where we can directly record the three-dimensional picture of the, of the three real three-dimensional object. So what do we mean by the recognition of uh, 3D? Yesterday you have visited our lab, Sales lab, and you have seen the joint transform correlator architecture. So in optics, there are two schemes, what we call as the Wonder loop correlator and joint transform correlator. So this, these two correlators are the tools where you can match two different objects, you can match two different scenes, you can match two different faces, you can match two different fingerprints. As you know, the fingerprints are unique across the world. So everybody's fingerprint is unique. You can match them. Different techniques here also in Niti Patta also we are having this uh, fingerprint identification system. So for attendance, they do not go and sign, rather they go and put their thumb and get this part. So this is about the basic of the digital holography. I do not need to talk about the about this thing. So I'll skip this part. This will have been uh, listening for last four days. This is the fifth day today. So for optical correlator, we have two schemes, mass filter and joint transform correlator. So what is a mass filter? Mass filter is, suppose you have a function fx, you take its Fourier transform and take conjugate of that Fourier transform. So like if I'm taking fx, one dimensional function, its Fourier transform, I can denote it as capital F omega. Conjugate of the capital F omega is called mass filter. All right. Now we have some unknown function, say gx, and I want to match fx with gx. It means I, I want to face, uh, I want to match my face with somebody else's face, whether they are same or different. So how optically it is done? So we start with the same four-dimensional. Uh, a 4F correlator where you have this uh, focal length, this is for collimation. So, this is 1F. So, we take the Fourier transformation of the input target, say GX, GXY, 
okay this input image and calculate its Fourier transform with its to this Fourier transform domain right so we are starting with the gx we have taken its Fourier transform so we have its to capital g omega so we have got here capital g omega and here i have this match filter which i defined as capital f omega Capital F omega is the match filter. I said that you start with the simple function fx, take its Fourier transform, take its conjugate. So its conjugate of f omega is with me, but I am calling as the match filter. So I have placed that match filter in this plane. And what I have got from here is the capital G omega. So seeing a coherent being applied, both the functions will be multiplied together. So what we are multiplying capital F omega conjugate of capital F omega multiplied by capital G omega. Now what will happen? Both the functions are not same. Then you will not get any output here. It will simply produce some noise. Now suppose we start with this input function fx we have this f omega this target which i want to match this is also fx so what we will get here we have conjugate f omega multiplied by f omega is that clear so f omega multiplied by conjugate of f omega what is it out complex function e to the power plus ix multiplied by e to the power minus ix. So it becomes e to the power zero. This is will be expansion. But it's a right b. So what remains is the simple plane b of light. And you are taking one more Fourier transform with this lens. So plane b will be simply focused at one point. So we'll have one central bright dot spot on the CCD camera. So when did you obtain this bright dot, uh, bright spot? When both the functions were matching to each other. And this is what the Vanderloop corrector is. The moment we have any mismatch, you will not get this spot. So no correlation output. The moment we have spot, it means that both the functions are matching. Now there can be cases that the functions are matching partially or or it uh, partially not matching. Suppose I, I uh, distinguish letter A with letter X. So letter A has also slanting, X has also slanting when you are matching them. So A, this slanting will, will match with the X slanting. You will get something. It is not that there won't be any B. But the intensity of the B is going to vary when they are fully matching or they are partially matching. So what we need to do, we need to threshold the intensity and take a decision that, okay, if the intensity level is above this, we will consider it fully matched. If it is below this, then we consider no match. So there is no scheme for partial matching. Is that clear? So this is the basic uh, scheme for the match filter. Second one is joint transform correlator. So what is joint transform correlator? In this case, we take this reference and target together placed in the input plane. So whatever is the available bandwidth to me, I have divided that into two parts. Half part is for the target, new thing, new object, what, what you want to match. And half part is the known target, is the known function. Both we are placing together, divided into two half. Take its Fourier transform and record the intensity pattern. So when you have a Fourier transform, record its mod square, that becomes the power spectrum. So you have recorded the power spectrum. We call it as joint power spectrum because you are using two images in the input. 
We have recorded the intensity pattern here. Now, for matching, this intensity pattern has to be one more times Fourier transform. So it is basically a holographic pattern. Holographic pattern. So it is a light wave, light wave being mod modulated with this function and this function, reference and target together. They are traveling together, they are interfering. What you record is the interference pattern, intensity of the interference pattern. Exactly the things that come. We do not call it hologram, we call it drawing power spectrum here. But the basic principle remains the same. Now, once we display that recorded function here, recorded joint power spectrum here, that is simply a fringe pattern. If you mirate it with the light, what will happen? It will give you the refraction. It's like a grating. The moment you illuminate with the light beam, you will get diffraction orders. So there will be zero order diffraction, plus one, minus one, plus two, minus one diffraction. DC is undesired of both the two points, plus one and minus one, intensity in those two terms, diffraction orders, we call them as autopolarization peak. Those two peaks will appear when both the functions are matching. If they don't match, you will not get those autopolarization peaks. So this is another way, what we call as the joint toss on for a leader. Now to understand, both the techniques have some advantages and disadvantages. So, please repeat the autocorrelation peaks. Yeah, autocorrelation peaks, you have displayed the joint power spectrum here, illuminated with the light. So, it's a fringe pattern, it's like a great thing. So, it will give you the diffraction pattern here. So, you will have zero order plus one minus one diffraction orders. So, this plus one and minus one diffraction orders, they are conjugate to each other. That like a mirror image, they will always be there. We call them as the auto correlation peaks. No, not focus spot. You will have this. The recording you said that uh, both the input and the output are matched together. They are placed together. We have divided the whole bandwidth. After half band, we have the reference, half band, we have the target. Yeah, both are interfering, like we was propagating anyway, both are interfering and you record the interference pattern in the Fourier plane. Yes, this is what the this is what the demerit is. What the demerit is, whatever bandwidth I have, I have divided into two parts. Reference and target. If I compare it with the wonder loop, you are not dividing any bandwidth. So whole band, whatever is the area available to you, you can use it for the target. But in the max filtering case, you have to synthesize the filter beforehand. So I think maybe what you are asking is the size. The size yeah. of yeah. the total yeah. uh, plane is uh, looks look small, but no, you know that is what the plane will look like. But in the Fourier transform of those Fourier transform, so it is not that I this I. It have. It will have the hand of the diffraction uh, as well. So when you are recording, you have to record the hand as well. So uh, one benefit here is you do not have to synthesize any filter beforehand. No match filtering. No filter is required. We are doing it simultaneously. But you have to do it twice. The operation is twice. You have to first record it and then again display it. So this is the basic structure. Now, these are the advantages what I mentioned uh, with they have been mentioned, uh, mentioned here. Another aspect attached to it is phase retrieval. So it's the transport abundance if you have heard. So why I'm talking that because we you come apply everything together in the developing the systems. So phase retrieval is a tool, is an algorithm where you again start with an intensity data and retrieve the lost phase information. The moment you take quarter square, phase information is lost. So we have this algorithm. You will start with some unknown factor, 
some uh, random function and then keep on iterating, iterating. So until unless you reach to the original page back. This is what is the page retrieval algorithm. So I'll, I'll skip. This part also I'll take later. First, this is to this one. Now, I have understood the JTC scheme. Place two functions together, take Fourier transform. Same thing you can do it here for three dimensional objects. So you have this reference signal, take its Fourier transform here. This is the input signal, take its Fourier transform, combine them together. This is what will give you the structure. Then calculate its Fourier transform. This is how the output it will get. This is what the mathematically you can denote it. Let me show you something else. So, some uh, 3D objects we have made here. This is the hexagonal prism, and this is the simulated uh, uh, DFS of the hexagonal prism, and this is a cone. So, we are matching this with these two. So, if you want to do the normal reconstruction in the JTC, you can do the normal reconstruction as well, like uh, this is oligarchy. This is what you will obtain. So, we'll have the zero order and the two orders. It's exactly the same way you calculate the, the distal order. But we have to apply it for matching. So, the moment you match them, if I match this hexagonal with the hexagonal one, you will have an autoposition peak here. The moment they do not match, the hexagonal and uh, another, another is cone, uh, but still you can see there will be some <coughs> partial matching. So what you get is the output. You get autocorrelation peak here also. Some uh, correlation peak, what we call as the cross correlation, when the two functions are not same, we call it cross correlation. When they are same, we call it as the autocorrelation. So here you are getting cross correlation peak, but see the peak height. Peak height is very less as compared to this one. So if you match a cone with a cone, peak height will be very high. And if you match cone with any other object, peak height is going to deteriorate. So what we do, we can threshold any anywhere, and then we can take a decision making system. Okay, up to 90% above, we'll call it fully matched. So here instead of two, we, we are taking Three-dimensional object. Now this was the one case matching directly two objects. Then we can have in 3D, we can match two holograms. This is a hologram of one object and this is a hologram of another object. Here it is again, it's a normalized one. We have uh, decided some thresholding, and you can see here the autopolition peak has completely gone. So, we do some processing to decide uh, the actual final result. This is the experimental setup for recording the digital hologram. We start with the laser, then the previous meter, then this is how we can record the hologram. So, record the hologram of one object, record the hologram of the another object. So, this is the target object, this is the uh, Program of this object and this is the reference object. Now I'm matching this object with this one. This what the reconstruction of the hologram will tell you. If you are matching them, so these are the results. Normalized cross correlation. That we have used different schemes for the correlation because one thing is to be noticed here that. In the beginning, I said that there will be one DC and two autocorrelation peaks. But by means of some tools, we have removed the DC and one of the uh, autocorrelation peaks. So here you see only one peak. Otherwise, in normal conventional ATC, you will have a very strong DC and side by side two peaks. So what we are doing, we have used here. We, we call this, this as the non-linear joint fractional transform correlator. So we have used yesterday I talked about fractional Fourier transform. 
So we have used this fractional Fourier transform. The benefit of the fractional Fourier transform is if you take a Fourier transform, you are exactly in the Fourier plane, that will be the fully focused point. The moment you take a fractional plane, it means you are not in the focal plane. So you are in the defocused uh, plane. The moment you reach to the defocused plane, the DC is not so strong because it is it gets spread. It gets a spread. So the moment you take the fractional plane, DC is a spread. It means when you take one more Fourier transform, again the DC will be much uh, deteriorated size. So what physically happening, whatever energy is available in your plane, more energy is concentrated in the DC part, zero order part, that gets spread into other orders. So the benefit is DC becomes of the lower intensity, rather that energy gets distributed into the plus one and minus one orders. So those two orders become more strong, better than the earlier things. So this is the benefit of doing with the fractional Fourier transform. And here we have used this normalized, normalized is a non-linear part. So we take some factor, there are some two uh, ways how to decide that non-linear factor. So decide that non-linear factor, and whatever joint power spectrum we are recording, we multiply by that factor. So that further improves the number. This is why we have got rid of the any zero order, there we have only one peak. Is that clear? So we are matching two holographs here. This is what is the basic approach. Now, there are many parameters to know that when we are matching, yes, are we matching correctly or not? So, these are some uh, performance measure parameters, what we call as the discrimination ratio, means uh, letter E and F, we are want to discriminate. How good is the discrimination? So this is how we calculate the peak to correlation energy, then peak to side low ratio. So the moment you see this uh, peak, usually if the object has partial matching, you will see there will be side lows here and here, both sides, which is not good, which will give you a confusing conclusion. So we consider it is a peak or it is some kind of noise. So we have to suppress them. So these are the parameters we calculate, and based on that, we finally say, okay, it is matching. So these are the different cases, uh, and we have checked that. Now here, more conventional thing. So this is another digital holographic setup. So you have this. Uh, Laser light, then here the lens, previous laser, and here the object is like a reflective object. So we can record the hologram of this object and any object. This is the approach for recording that. So you can record transmissive object hologram or reflective objects hologram. Yeah. This is what the lab setup is. This uh, is sort of a PhD student when he was working. Now he's an assistant professor. This is the actual setup, optical setup for carrying out this experiment. So these are the holograms of a dice, hologram of a coin, digital hologram of a coin, digital hologram of a pin cover, this is the gold. This object is the this is not the reconstruction of original object, and this is how the hologram has been recorded. There is one video. I I hope I will be able to. So you it works. Not working fully. Yeah, this is you can see the series of holograms have been recorded. Somehow it is not fully. So there was a dice and several holograms were recorded. How many? I do not remember correctly, but maybe you can record 20, 30, 50, 100, as many you want. Recording doesn't take any time. You have to simply place that and keep on rotating and keep on recording the holograms. 
Yeah, it is now this movie, so you can see. Another video is not working of different things here. Yeah. There's object there yeah, recorded. But here, mind you, there, there are lots of uh, speckles here. So, what is the view in this index? I do not know. <laughs> this is easy to do that. Now, you can change many parameters here and record. But what you see is the output. This is the reconstruction of this follow. This is the hologram, and this is the reconstruction. Now you see lots of uh, speckles are there, lots of lines are there. This is a crudely recorded hologram, not done any filtering. Now you can do lots of filtering into it and reconstruct better quality in it. Yes. So you have paid many planes. So in, in one in the recording one hologram, you will you are recording only one plane. Yes, yes. Again, you tilt, rotate, record another hologram. Keep on combining them. Question. So you are asking resolution and that is so that you will com compare. Maybe you have to uh, see what you want. You this is the object. I record only one hologram, so I see only one face. With one hologram, we cannot conclude. So you can keep on with uh, uh, rotating it, you will record many holograms. The reconstruction for each surfaces. Means every time you are recording one plane and you are doing the reconstruction. You have to do lots of filtering into it, then you can improve the quality of this uh, image. Is that clear? This is what are you asking? Is that clear or push or push there? Okay, now when we are matching these two, so you can, you have this correlation uh, peak, auto correlation peak here, peak height is here, you can see it is very good, and here peak height is very less. So what is the uh, meaning here, what I want to tell you, that instead of recording two frames, I can have the videos recorded into a three-dimensional object video, and you can do the matching, uh, in real time. Or you can match it frame per frame. So these are some more uh, results. This is how it, otherwise it will be applied. Not done any filtering. This is the diffraction, zero order diffraction order, and this one's a plus one, minus one diffraction order. Here you can see more orders. Plus two and minus two diffraction orders. These are also autocorrelation plates. But the intensity is very less, so we have to decide the threshold and suppress them. So we want only one, one of them. We can have more than two objects to be matched together. So here, the benefit of the digital photography is you can have multiple objects matched together through this, multiple 3D objects to be matched together. Some more results of that line. Right? This is how we have compared the con conventional G uh, fractional GPC and nonlinear. We have combined them, so you can see the our results are improved when we use nonlinear parameters. These are the reconstructed images corresponding to those uh, digital holograms. More tables. I just skipped them. Then comes another important area. Where I have also talked about the securing a digital hologram. What happens now if you have one hologram that I talked about the holographic digital object? So we recorded one hologram of the object 
and again from one hologram we recorded another hologram. Same thing can be do it here also. Suppose I have recorded a hologram of a dice and the hologram. That hologram can be further propagated, say for five centimeter or five millimeter, that will generate another hologram. You will get another hologram. So what our idea was, can we create this security system where we can combine multiple holograms into a single one? Like multiple layers, you take 10 different pages, 10 layers of the 10 pages, and keep sandwiching them together. So you have a thick page, like a thick page, but it has multiple layers. You see the Indian currency notes. The moment you look at the Indian currency notes, you have this uh, Ashoka stamp into it, the Lady's photograph as a watermark, some more uh, points are there added into it. So can we create similar kind of object where photograph has many, many features and then we are combining them together? Any me point. So we have 10 different features. So 10 different holograms corresponding to each feature and I have combined them together. Because all it is in the digital domain, we can multiplex them together and we have finally one hologram that has all the features. So based on that idea, we worked on this one that multi multi-plane phase only parallel holograms. This is uh, and then skip the algorithms because here also we have used this one uh, phase retrieval algorithm and combining them. So this was the idea that you have a one hologram plane, you have the plane of object plane one, object plane two, we can have ten different planes. We can create different planes. We can stop at which plane we want. Because here we are not using any optical element. So whatever is the noise level in the beginning, that will remain. We are not, with this uh, displacement, we are not adding any noise because we are doing it in the numerical. We are in the digital. The moment that you have the digital moment, you are in the numerical plane. And uh, you can numerically change that. And every time, I can take different propagation distance and you have a new hologram. Uh, One object is the. Uh... No, in the beginning we have the reference plane recorded one digital hologram. And once we have the digital hologram in the PC, then we are doing all of this. It is like simply image processing with the uh, digital holograms. So I will show you the ideas here. These are the uh, simulation designs. So you have an object of this size, then plane one, this plane two, plane three, plane four. And at the end, we can all combine them. This is what is the phase one dependent hologram of three plane objects. And this is the reconstruction. The moment you reconstruct this hologram, you will get individual at that particular distance. Recording, recording reconstruction during reconstruction, use those particular values where we have used the recording, you can immediately do that. But there are also some errors. Like uh, in all of the images, all the other points also have the shadow. Yeah, the, the shadow will be there. Now there are tools to remove them. They have not removed them. This one just to check the idea whether it will it will work or not. But those shadows we can remove. Yeah, yes. some more uh, results will there. Again, here, plane one, plane two, plane three, plane four, many, many things. We, we are still to do, we have still many things to do it, uh, with this. We have not done it. Let's do it. Where is this PC he left? So I have also forgotten that we have to uh, do something. But in this case, now so what was the idea? Idea is that we are comparing holograms. So we have many objects information put into a single hologram. And I can identify each object one by one. So the moment I have one hologram, I can compare and you have this auto condition data. Corresponding to that object. This is what is 
the in the optical holography is what is the multiplexing of the holographs. So you have multiplex many things, but here it is all digital. The moment who you want which object to be retrieved, you can retrieve. And if you do not want to retrieve, you just want to check whether this is the correct image. You do not want to show it anything, but you have some box. You say that this is my box. You can simply check and it will tell you this is your box. You are not going to open the box and say check that the five belongings are there or not. So this is this was published in the in this one. So this is for uh, another aspect is here uh, where what we have done that suppose you have an object whose intensity is very poor. We call such images as photon limited images. Like you take a picture uh, where you don't have enough light. So we got photon starved images or photon limited images. So we can create some object and start moving the number of photons from there. So that will become uh, photon starved images. And can we again check them for this uh, for recognition purpose? So of course it works. Here it is photon limited. And case of photon limited also, this our correlation works very well. When you don't have enough light, when you don't have enough uh, number of photons available with our These are next very important thing. So in digital holography, and this idea I got when I was in Greenland. So we had many lots of holograms, and uh, Professor Thomas Norton, he has lots of uh, holograms, and, and certainly was in the habit, but we were working in Greenland. So one day he gave me a CD which has hundreds of holograms. I asked him one day. His, his uh, nickname is Tom, so I asked him, Tom, if I say that these holograms I have recorded, what is your proof? Was recorded in Ireland. We are working on these holograms in Greenland. And if I uh, if I say you that these holograms were recorded in my lab in Ayr, but now, what is your say? Said I don't have any say. So there can be copyright so of the, the moment you have this program. And we have some document, every document has to be copyrighted. So these holograms can also be copyrighted. Our holograms are very copyrighted. No one can make as well out of them. So, so what I said is this that time that we can put some watermark into a hologram and let it be there. However, uh, that's the little section. It will do the reconstruction, but if I want to check whether this photogram was recorded in my lab, I can check whether that watermark is there or not in that photogram. So we worked on the photogram watermark. And this is what it is. You have this digital program, we, we found that even if you watermark, some watermark into the photogram, your reconstruction quality has no impact. But that watermark remains into it. It is invisible watermark, so visibly no one can say, you know, check and uh, can come to know that what is the watermark. This was the idea. So, how would you check? I have the watermark, so I'll check with that. But it won't make a difference. Like, if my watermark and non watermark images are exactly the same, then how, what am I to do with the watermark? This is what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so, this was the hologram watermark with color image. Then maybe I'll uh, skip uh, some of these parts. Come to back to that part. Then I'll again come back here. This one I want. Okay, let me first finish this part. Then I'll finish it. Some more details uh, with this uh, watermarking and uh, hologram. This was with what I was discussing yesterday, double random face encodings. So this input image, RPM1, RPM2, Fourier transform, this is what you get. 
and the fractional Fourier transform. I'll again just skip that. This was the geometry I used for recording the digital hologram and recording the encrypted, encrypted or secure digital hologram. So this was the end of its mass. This is the SLM where we display the object and record the interference pattern on GC. These were the initial days uh, results. This was the original image, encrypted hologram. Then we added some more key because what you can see that you can see some fringes, fringe patterns here. So if somebody can claim that it has some information, so how to hide it further, we use one more random face mask to make it more randomized. So I, by seeing that this encrypted image, it is very difficult to judge and guess it forms. And this was the key hologram. You have to combinedly use these uh, three to retrieve this uh, keys. This were again in the fractional Fourier domain. These are the different orders what you can see. This was in the parallel domain, and this was fully phase encryption. Somebody was asking, you asked about the phase. So here it was the fully phase. This was the input image. It was converted into a phase image, and these are the encrypted holograms. As, as you can see, in the DC, it's very strong. The moment you take it from the Fourier to the frontal plane or fractional Fourier plane, means you have defocused it, the intensity is reduced, and that helps in the output of the results. These are some more uh, results based on that. Here we have used a single SLM, maybe see only one RPA, because phase image, you can do the one, one RPA, it works very well. This was another aspect which, which, which I was referring that we can have multiple layers of the uh, encrypted image and share it with a different object. So this was the real 3D object and we managed into, into three parts like three different users and then each part was encrypted and the, finally this was the encrypted image. It's corresponding to each individual user, he will use his own key and decrypt his part. The master key user can be able to retrieve the whole inbox. These were, these were the results multiplex encrypted image, decrypted image for the user one, decrypted image for user two, this was the user n. This is how we can uh, create. It was, for the, it was for the 3D object, real 3D object, and whose uh, holograms have been recorded, and this is what we have used. We further used on the uh, multiple uh, the holograms to uh, propagating it at different distances. This was the digital hologram of a micro lens. This is the uh, first diffraction here. You can, uh, it is convergible, your intensity is very poor in this, uh, all the cases. This uh, is the retrieved phase of this micro lens. We have calculated. You can plot them and see that. Uh, where it is a long distance and correct distance, the distance becomes additional feature into it, and here the wavelength is wrong. Wavelength is another uh, key to the system. These are the, the four components uh, have been placed together, and this is how you can see the encrypted hologram and digital. So basically, it is a all digital hologram recording in the optical domain and rest in the uh, digital. So here it is a hologram. It's a frontal hologram and it is for you people because they are made for the lens. So if you reconstruct it, this is what it is. So I need to stop here. So it's already 150. Can we have the last slide one for some? So you wanted this thank you slide? Yes, sir. 
So I, in the first half, I talked about uh, hologram watermarking. Assuming that I have recorded the hologram, and somebody else claims that no, you have not recorded. This is my recording. So this this might become a copyright issue because everything is going digital. Holography has gone to the digital domain. So somebody might claim and complain and can steal the information. So how we can do this hologram watermarking? What does what do we mean by that? So meaning is that so what do we mean by watermarking actually? Must have heard that in the currency notes you can see the watermarks, the photo of uh, Mahatma Gandhi or uh, currency amount written 500, 700, 500, 1000 like that. So watermark is a technique which complements the cryptography. Like I said to you that you can encrypt some information, secure some information. The valid key user or the valid user will have the key and he will be able to retrieve that. Suppose I shared the key with you. I sent some document and uh, share the key, you are able to retrieve that, decrypted that. Now, you can make n number of copies of that. So that reproduction into multiple copies, I won't be able to trace, I won't be able to track, I won't be able to authenticate. So from one information, you can generate different information because these are all in digital format. So you, it is very easy to calc, to do that. Things were not very easy. When you with the computers, there were no scanners, no photocopiers. Very easy. It was very tough. Now it is very easy. So this watermarking is something which will remain there, whatever number of copies you make but I can authenticate every time. This is what it is. So this watermarking is, has different types. Like it depends which domain you are watermarking according to the dom working domain, according to the type of document, according to the type of human perception and according to application. <coughs> So what does it mean working domain? The working domain can be input domain, object domain, or the frequency plane, means a spatial frequency plane. Take the Fourier transformation of that data, you are in the frequency domain. So you can do the watermarking in the input plane or also in the Fourier plane. All the digital watermarking techniques are spatial domain watermarking. Like you are going to get the certificate, and within the certificate, there is the global uh, uh, map. It's a watermark. So this is visible. It is done in the spatial domain. If we go to the frequency domain, and I try to the what frequency domain means, I am modulating the spatial frequency components. And then, getting back to one more Fourier transformation, we are in the object domain of the image plane. In that case, whatever watermark I have put there, it won't be visible. That is why, according to the human perception, watermark can be invisible or can be visible. Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi's photograph is a visible watermark. But there can be watermark which is invisible. Like there in the, in the currency note itself, when you go to the bank, bank fellow will say oh, it is duplicate or original. They switch on a laser pointer, use the blue, blue color ultraviolet rays, and then they are able to read that. Then they say, okay, it is original. So it is a watermark which is not visible. Otherwise, you say you ultraviolet rays, then you are able to see them. So that is invisible watermark. Now this invisible watermark is again of two types. You have watermarked it, suppose I take a photocopy of that. 
it means you are taking intensity modulus intensity square of that function. The moment you take intensity, if there is some phase information encoded, that will be lost. So this watermark can be again two types. It can be robust or it can be fragile. Fragile means next processing watermark has gone. If it is still staying with your document, it is called as robust watermark. Is that clear? Fragile watermark might means suppose the certificate what you are getting, it has some watermark which you don't see, but it is there. Suppose from that original document, you create a duplicate document. In the duplicate document, if the watermark which I have placed into it, if it stays in the duplicate copy, it is called robust watermark. If you take a photocopy, watermark has gone, it means it is present. So, you the authentic document, you cannot make a duplicate of that. So, I think a better uh, version for protecting against copyright. Yes. So, it, it is, so these kinds of watermark are created depending upon your application, which type of application you want. Then, robust watermarking again, it is of two types. It can be private, it can be public. Public means everyone can see, or it can, it, I can only see, others won't be able to see. Like suppose you watch television at the evening and you watch the news and you see at the corner it is Aztec. It means that's the watermark of the Aztec. It is visible to everyone. So it is made, it has been made public. So this is how they are classified. <clears throat> Again, according to the type of document, you can have watermark into the text, you can have watermark into an image, you can have watermark into an audio, you can have watermark in. Why this watermark thing became very uh, important? Because as you know that uh, if a good uh, picture is released by the Bollywood, Next day, they you will find those CDs available in the market. So, how do they make it? To watch a TV, a cinema in a cinema hall, you have to pay three to hundred rupees. But in few hundred rupees, you can buy a CD and hundred people can watch. Everyone will watch. So, how do they do? They some people will go and sit in the cinema hall and make movie from that movie. They record them. And then they can put in the YouTube where they, where, anywhere they want. And nowadays, very good quality cameras are available. Even though mobile phone cameras are very good now, it is available and you can immediately copy it. Yes. Now the thing is, it means those people who have invested crores of rupees into making that cinema, they are losing money. So then they complain to police. Police will go and start raiding, uh, making raids at different locations. They will found, find CDs. Those CDs, if they watch, they can watch the same movie, but those watermarks have gone because the original reels, what they have procured or videos, what they have purchased, they will have watermarks. These will not be having watermarks. So this is how police will catch them and put behind the bar. Okay, this is, this is how we can protect the information and protect the property basically. So every knowledge is a property. So saving the knowledge is saving the property. So we need this, this too. There is a lot of quality in that. Yes, but that doesn't matter. People will see, oh, I'm able to uh, see the dialogue. Uh, here the dialogues are able to see the scenes, that, is, that, that doesn't matter. But the great loss to the uh, owner, suppose I write, write a book and the cost of the book is $200. Alright, next day you need the copy of that book, you do not afford to pay $200. Somehow you take that book from the library. Go to the photocopier 
a fellow, ask him to make a copy, a photocopy of the whole book. The book has only 200 pages. He will do it in an hour and a spiral bind, give it to you. So all the content is there. Is it legally correct? It is not legally correct. It means the publisher who has invested into it, they are at loss. So at every year, there used to be some rates in Delhi that the medical books are very costly. Uh, many engineering books are very costly. They, they cost in dollars and euros. So if 500 euro is a cost of any book, there will be one version available with the library and there will be hundreds of that copied version available in the outside the library. And people will buy uh, well, in five, 500 rupees and take the book and go up. Of course, the quality is not good, but it works. You have got all the information, but it has created huge loss to the publisher. The resolution loss is acceptable compared to yes. IR. <laughs> yeah. So, what we do in this uh, hologram water market? So what I did, you have a hologram here in this plane, propagate this hologram to certain distance t. It means at this plane, you have a new hologram. There are two ways, two way, different ways to do uh, this hologram watermarking. One way is, you have the hologram and add the watermark here itself. Right? Another, that, but that is not uh, robust. The moment you move, that has gone. So the making it a robust watermarking. What what is the intended one thing that you propagate it for distance d, and at distance d again you propagate it back at distance d prime, and at this plane you place the watermark. You have a new hologram now, but that hologram is watermarked hologram. Keep on doing the reconstruction. Everything is perfectly fine and at any point of time, you can check the watermark or originality of the watermark. This is a phase shifting, phase shifted federal hologram recorded at distance 179 millimeters. Right? Phase Holography, sir, has already discussed. So, this is a phase shifted digital hologram recorded at this distance. Right? This is a regenerated phase shifted hologram after pre space propagating for 20 millimeters. New hologram. Now, what is the difference between this one and this one? Do you see any much change? It appears same, almost same in the fringe pattern, the speckles. This is this, oh, sorry. this one and this one. Phase shift propagated power. So if I don't show you, I show you this one, I'll show you other one, you won't be able to differentiate. There is some hologram, some interference pattern. But this hologram has been created from the previous one after propagating it for 20 millimeter distance. And if you reconstruct that hologram, this is what the object is. This is a computer chip. And this computer chip has eight lengths. One, two, three, four, four in the front, one, two, three, four in the back. Now somebody was asking in the morning that if you record the hologram, so, like different object is at different distances. It means you unsnap, you have the information, but at different depths. This is what it is. One, two, three, four chips you are not able to see because the front one are in the focus. Hologram is same. Do the reconstruction separately. Reconstruction with phase of the phase only watermark program quantized to be one bit. Now this was quantized. So quantization again 
is a kind of compression of the hologram. Hologram compression sir has talked about. Yesterday I also discussed about the JPEG uh, compression or the hologram compressor. So it is quantized. It means it has been compressed. Size was earlier 100 MB. With the quantization, it has come down to say 40 MB. But sir, now, emission is not a compression. No, it is not analogous to compression, but it works like compression. It works like compression. It compresses the data. It is not a compressive technique, no. but it compresses data. Now, this is the watermark IIT Patna. So, what I did, I have encrypted this IIT Patna image, and this is the encrypted image of that watermark. Now, this encrypted image of the watermark will be added into the hologram, not the original object. So, we are only dealing in the frequency domain, spatial frequency domain, nothing in the spatial domain. So that encrypted image is watermarked into, watermark is encrypted using any technique and it has been added to the hologram and this is the watermarked Fresnel hologram. That's the original hologram. Just the data marketing. Yes. So this is a watermarked digital hologram. So now it is very difficult to say that this has more information or that has more information. If, if I place you both, I don't write any caption, then it will look alike. You see, it is all same. No difference. All right. Now do the reconstruction. This was the original object. Now I have done the reconstruction of the original watermark of the hologram and you have this reconstruction. So if I go back, show you this reconstruction and the earlier version of reconstruction, you will see no difference in quality. It means when you have watermarked the hologram or used the hologram directly, both are same. But it is a protected hologram. All right, so you will see the comparison. Yeah, this is important. The size has to be of the same matrix size because we are doing the, uh, we have done everything in the matrix. So, matrix dimensions should be same. Suppose I start with the thousand cross thousand pixels size, watermark can be any of any size, but the matrix should be of thousand cross thousand. All right. But we can modulate that. Right? Yes, yes, we can modulate. So see the difference. I, I, I'll go back and show you the original reconstruction. Remember this reconstruction and this reconstruction. This one and the this one. Both are same. So there is no impact on the quality of the hologram no impact on the reconstruction quality of the hologram, but they are watermarked and they are secured. Now, who can retrieve the watermark? For retrieving the watermark, you have to know what were the encryption keys used for this one. You have to use those keys, then you will be able to retrieve the watermark for the IAT Patna. And if I want to check the watermark, this IIT Patna is back. It will be back only when all the keys what I use for it for the encryption, same we have to use for the decryption. So we are able to retrieve the water bar. This is reconstruction with wrong key. One of the keys was wrong, nothing is decoded. This is with the page of the page only hologram. With this one also, I can retrieve. Uh, retrieve. Yes. Sir, 
So what I mean to say that when you record a phonograph, it's a complex function. Digital phonograph will be a complex function. It will have real part as well as the imaginary part. So if you can use the real part for the uh, reconstruction, that will also give you the original object. If you use the imaginary part, that will also give you the reconstructed image. So what we do, we play with the phase only part and do the quantization, you can do the manipulation. So that way we reduce the size. So it is a kind of uh, compression of the digital tool. Now, I have brought this much information of this hologram. I have only this much information available to me. Right? Then I want to check whether it is possible to get the watermark or not. From left side, I have kept this much and right hand side this much. See the reconstruction. See the reconstruction. This is what somebody was asking that when you are recording the plane, so you can see the difference. Can you see? Sorry, this one, this one. This part is in focus, other parts are out of focus here, other parts are in focus and the rest of the part is in out of focus. Here, this is when you are, you have blocked from the side, either side. I'll show you other impacts, other effects. And still you can recover the watermark with only this much information. So it is say one part of only 25% data is available with you. Out of the 100% hologram, only one quarter of the hologram is available with you. Still I am able to not only reconstruct the image, but retrieve the watermark also. So it is very well secured. Now, I have earlier I showed you from this side and this side I have uh, left. Now, top and bottom I have left. So, you see this impact of upper side and lower side. And now, this will answer your question what will be the effect on the reconstruction? So, in the first case, these points are in focus. Second case, lower points are in focus. Same hologram. Now you can see, same hologram, one hologram was only recorded, and I can focus different areas. Suppose the hologram is of size 2000 plus 2000 pixels. So wherever I want, I want to focus here, I can focus here. Rest of the part will be out of focus. And that's the beauty of the hologram. This is not a debate of you were asking whether it is a debate, how to counter it. This is not the debate, this is the merit of the hologram. Like you will see, if you go to some of the museums, you will see some portraits the, uh, they have made. So you will see the portrait is there. If you look at here, stand here, you will see that portrait is looking at me. If you stand from there, still they will find that they are looking at me. Right? You go other side, still you will find that that fellow is looking at you. So this is how that effect is done. And this is what is in built-in holography. So you are focusing at. Now you can for different distances. So in the same place, the same object, front, uh, front four pins are in focus and back four pins are out of focus. Again, change the distance, you will see this this becomes out of focus and these four will be in focus. I hope I have those results. Still in the, all the cases, you uh, I'm able to retrieve the watermark. In all the cases. There are no results in any different case. I have not done. So the distance was 179 millimeter. 
So it is like zooming property. When you are doing the reconstruction, now you all can uh, write codes for the digital hologram and do the unwrapping, everything you can apply. So you can keep changing the distance. We start from 150. Maybe if I'm taking this, this object, taking a hologram of this. So from here to here, you have n number of lanes. The moment you sign light, you are taking the all the cross sections. Start taking different values because here this distance will be one. Here maybe 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3 millimeter like that. Yeah. Change the value D in your algorithm and you will be able to focus different planes of this object by the construction. Is that clear? So this is the this is a feature which is inbuilt with the hologram. So that, that is why we can use it in many, many uh, applications. So one hologram break into 10 pieces. Each piece will be able to reconstruct the image. Why? Because it is interferometric. So the moment you take the interference, it is spread all across the cross section. So this completes one part. This was another geometry for how to record them. So I think I'll skip this part. I think it will do automatically. Okay, another thing what I was talking about this E. coli, which I showed you the video that time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is what I told you that any hologram, digital hologram, is basically a complex function. Function. Complex function. So from that, comp any complex function can be broken into real part as an imaginary part. And any part you can use for the reconstruction. Yes. So imaginary part is phase. So phase only function. Yes. It doesn't have, the moment you have separated, it is phase only. No, no, no. They are in, inherent. They will be there. The moment you have recorded the hologram, it is it has both the component. It is there. Yes, sir, we are so normally, thinking. normally we use that hologram as it is and do the numerical reconstruction yes, and get the uh, 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 reconstructed image back. Here there is, you don't require two SLMs. You have simply for optical for, uh, for optical reconstruction. So in which SLM? Which yeah, optical SLM, uh, it is always better if you use the phase only part. Phase only, phase only always gives you better result because phase may, contains most of the high frequency components. So the moment you uh, grab more high component uh, frequencies, the reconstruction quality is better. 
from the same hologram we can extract the phase only and amplitude amplitude okay and we can reconstruct it using any other. any any one so that is for the optical reconstruction optical. of the digital hologram that is the main purpose earlier or still people are working uh, for the 3d television 3d displays yeah there are many no there are there are techniques where you will have the difficulty you cannot remove but maybe you can come up with a new idea i don't know <laughs> what if we had two holograms yeah it will react perfectly to both of them so in that case you won't know which which is the that you need to check work and check these things are not done in literature so you have to work and check you can come up with a newer idea as i think if that you want to add something with that Modern one, really, it is possible. Right? Yes, it is possible. If you want to add departments of physics. Yes, anything, anything. Just I am showing one example. I have written IIT Patna. You can write anything. Yes. If you want to add something in the water. Possible. Paul, possible. possible. No, but there is for water marking, there is a rule. When we do the water marking, you have the input input function. I am I cannot talk now because uh, we don't have enough time but if you, if you are interested i have done that i can send you my research papers so what we do you have the input function you add some watermark so suppose function is fx you have the watermark gx yeah wx you want to add this wx to the fx so what do we do fx plus a is a factor multiplied by wx and that we add we have to choose very selectively what should be the value of a that is the weighing factor so if you take the a value larger then what you will see you add the watermark but the whole picture will become very noisy if the picture is very noisy then it becomes suspicious that okay something has been done there something is there so what do they do they manipulate the value of a if you do this experiment in simulation you will you can do that you keep on changing the value of a and look at the quality of the watermarked uh, function the moment you see that both are same then we can stop this is the optimized value for a for this kind of watermarking so you if you are adding one more uh, two watermarks three watermarks again you have to optimize that parameter very uh, correctly otherwise somebody will guess okay something is there so we should we have to have the technique that no one will uh, uh, no 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 one can guess that it is watermarked because it is invisible watermark visible watermark there is no problem but when you are making invisible watermark then there is a problem okay so another uh, thing what i wanted to show you about this e coli so e coli has very, lots of strains and it it gives you the water borne disease it creates water borne diseases the size of an e coli is about 2 micron long and 0.5 micron in diameter so optimal growth of the e coli occurs at 37 degree centigrade so we need to check in whether in the water e coli is there or not it has lots of strains many strains are good that that is good for our health but some of them are not good to our health so this is a kind of uh, uh, digital holographic microscope which i was talking about you can see the name of the company is lensi tech from switzerland they have developed this uh, digital holographic microscope and i was so surprised that when i was pursuing my phd at iit delhi with uh, uh, professor kehar singh so my initial work were on security optical security those uh, recording the holograms in the photo refractive crystal and doing the reconstruction and using it for the storage purposes during those days it was uh, around 2000 suddenly many research papers started Here is on digital holography. 
right? Because the first paper on digital holography came in 1994 by Sars and Jota. Optics. Second paper came in 1996 by the same group. After that, many papers started coming. But still, up to the year 2002, the papers were hardly 70 80 papers were in the whole country published on digital holography. So, my supervisor went to Switzerland for that during that period, 2002. He stayed there for a month in Switzerland. When he was there, he saw many people working on this digital holography. That time he started putting pressure on me that you also work on digital holography. And this field was very new. Because as I, as, I, as I said, but maybe up to in 2002, there were hardly 50 or 60 journal papers in the whole world were published. Or not even 50-60. Less than that. So I was found finding lots of difficulty that how to do uh, work on this uh, technique. Then I asked him, he was in Switzerland and I had by one more co supervisor, he was in USA for one year. So there was no help and no my PhD uh, students are not here. So there was no support. I had my senior, he also moved to USA for postdoc. <laughs> So then I started talking to many, uh, uh, some of the faculty members in the physics department in IIT Delhi because this area was very new. So people were hardly aware of this. I had only those 40, 50 papers somehow I managed because those days still it was not everything digital. From this I will that maybe I could get some base on those papers, reading them and trying to uh, do the uh, digital holography. Not able to uh, see anything. This is what Sunakshita was studying recently. Let's say that how to do that. I struggled a lot. Then there was one guy who was doing PhD in Switzerland. His name is Michael Lindling. He is now in the Stanford University. He published one paper in I Triple Journal. On the, the title was Fresnel X. Fresnel and uh, the transform and uh, uh, Fresnel transform and wavelet transform they had combined and given the title Fresnel X. I could read his paper, but I was finding difficulty. I wrote him an email that I am finding difficulty how to work on this one. Then he suggested, okay, why don't we uh, talk to each other? So that those days this video conferencing things were not available. So I wrote him an email and he said, okay, you can chat. So we, for at night time, we were talking to each other and he suggested, okay, you switch out your uh, setup, everything. We don't see each other. We have never met, but we meet you through this uh, uh, email exchange. We said you record a simple Fourier hologram. This is what I was uh, asking in San Francisco. The way I, everything you learn, but if you go in the actual laboratory, you will not be able to produce that. Then Mike, your super, you go back, your supervisor will say, you have spent one week time in Patna and you are not able to record a simple digital hologram. Your whole one week is waste. But the thing is, you have, you have not done it. Simulation is one thing and doing things in the actual experiment, it is very different. So what to do? So that fellow helped me. And then I got the correct idea. How to proceed? So we recorded a simply Fourier hologram, displayed some object on an SLM, used a lens to Fourier transform that, and the, the, uh, use a separate reference beam. Both the beams interfere, saw the interference fringes on the camera and captured that. Very easy task. Then, after that he said, one click, you will get the result. I said, what to do now? You said, you see, it is a simple Fourier hologram. To call that Fourier hologram in your MATLAB code and simply take FFT2 of that. So we took the FF Fourier transform of that function, of the hologram. It resulted into a DC and two images, conjugate images on the screen. 
The moment I got the result, I showed, I told him, Michael, I got that. Then he said, now I'm going off. You take care. So I got that result. Otherwise, you will be pondering here and there and you will not be able to get any results. Then I got, okay, now I can tax. And then I started recording the frontal holograph. Then I recorded the fractional Fourier holograph. And then I used for encryption. Then I used it for amplitude image, for phase image, everything we could do it. So this is the way we proceed. So one, those days, those Switzerland group, there was a professor, uh, Guche, there. He retired, uh, Guche and Deperson. They were professors, they retired. And five or six PhD students were working on the digital holography with him. And those were the only group in the world they were producing these papers. <laughs> Professor retired, all four or five PhD students joined, started a company with the professor, and he met this Lindsay Tech company. Now, currently, I think from 2004 or 5, they started this company. Around the same time, I also finished my PhD and moved to other area. They started company, and in last how many years? Maybe 15 years. He has sold more than 200 pieces of this microscope. Each microscope costs 1.5 crore. And there are only 20 staff members working with him in that company. And the picture quality or the reconstruction quality of what they produce is excellent. I'll show you those. The, the movie I showed you of the eco light were taken from this microscope. So all the digital holographic setup, everything is within this box. These are the four microscope objective lenses. You can change the, you can use different objective lens, maybe 20x, 10x, 40x, 100x. And, and here is the petri dish where that eco light is kept here. Got it. And then will, here is the camera, uh, uh, screen of the computer where you will see the reconstruction quality. This was some of the experiments which I did for the USF resolution chart, hologram of that chart, use the Linux microscope objective, and this is the hologram. Reconstruct this. This is the intensity of that numerical reconstruction. This is the phase part. This is the phase part. No, it is not phase shifting. It is not phase shifting. But they have they have somehow removed the zero order. Twin image, everything has been removed very nicely. Yes, they use everything. But everything is within that black box. Everything is fixed. Yes, everything is fixed. This is phase of that. This again, this, yes. Just a second. Ah, Mandal, tell me. Gadi, leke gaya nahi hai abhi. Abhi puchta hoon, ekwe tar ko student gaya tha. Ko aap se milega abhi jake. Acha, acha, thik hai, abhi puch, abhi puch leto. So this is with the uh, resolution chart again with 20x microscope objective. Ah, oh, gari leke gaya nahi ke sa usun. Acha. Nain, 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 yoh bandal khada hai, pahle unko sit kara do, phir leke aana. Phir leke aana. See the reconstruction. Very good quality reconstruction. You can see hardly any noise. You have seen the in the morning I showed you the dyes and other things. 
and bold. There are lots of noises, lots of speckles. Everything has been removed. So the it's the algorithm, the numerical reconstruction algorithm, which this is what Professor Bhattacharya was talking. No one will share with you, and it is clear pattern. Otherwise, experimental setup is very easy. So it is up to you how good you are in making good uh, numerical reconstruction. It is all in real time. You display the object, you have the image, like normal camera. It works with that speed. It's all 3D. A normal hologram. The LED light, LED light, LED laser dial. Sorry, not LED, laser dial. Laser dial. They have, uh, but uh, it doesn't matter much. Now, even with the LED sources, people have recorded uh, these programs. And you can do that. With the LED light. And LED light, if you use LED light, lots of speckles problems have worked. So it is easy, it is possible now. That is why he said in uh, one of the days that at some places for remote uh, uh, Medical uh, aid, people are using this mobile phone based data. This is again phase. What is this? I normally remove this uh, title and, and, and ask this question. This onion peel, this is how it looks like at 10x uh, microscope objective. This is how the numerical reconstruction would look like. We normally do not see them. This is how the phase of that will look like. Yes, it becomes transmission. You see the piazka chilka chilteja, you will be able to see them. That's a very good diffuser. Yeah. <laughs> This is how the 3D representation of that phase is. This is with 20x. This is how the numerical reconstruction. This is the phase part. So if you want more, start increasing the uh, objective lens. 40x, 100x, you will get. Yes. Yes. And this is the digital hologram of the eco light. One, one is still hologram. Movie, I'll show you later again. One of the hologram, one snap. This is what the reconstruction would be. You can see the eco light. Two micron is the wavelength. A two micron is the length of this eco light. Eco light is two micron length and the diameter is 0.5 micron, half a micron. This is phase of that, again with the 40x, 40x numerical uh, reconstruction. This phase part of that is again 3D representation. That is all. So let me show you the video. I showed you, it, is, it was in front of that uh, microscope objective lens. Yes, yes, nothing like a normal microscope. This is the video of that hologram that we are recording in the real time. And this is the numerical reconstruction of that. If you see on this uh, laptop screen, you will uh, visualize it better or you can see there. This projection is not good, that you can visualize better. And if you have a very good 3D display, then you will appreciate it much better. Because it is really 3D. We are seeing in the 2D pattern. And this is the phase of that. See the phase. Just 
just the one one angle just the one angle so i think that is all and uh, last i will show you for 5 minutes because it is almost going to be 345 so ti already showed you transport of intensity equation so in transport of intensity equation it has many many applications again the ti is a non interferometric technique but where we can record the uh, phase value phase information so for recording the phase information we have the interferometric technique or computational technique where we can use phase retrieval this this uh, phase retrieval part i uh, told you in the first part that you use this Bertrand Saxton phase retrieval algorithm you start with an unknown and random phase and keep on iterating and then finally we reach to the desired phase value but this tie this is another technique picography it's a, a new method it is also a lensless imaging technique sample is illuminated with a focus beam far field diffraction patterns are recorded repeatedly not one two three you record and from there you iterate and get the phase information so tichography is another uh, good technique so they are all basically complementary techniques of digital holography because digital holography mainly for recording the phase and this is what is the transport of intensity equation so i'll skip these parts this is what sir was referring so in this uh, transport of intensity equation what sir when sir you in the morning that we have to record two intensity patterns one at distance z another one is at z plus delta z it means you have to physically move the sensor camera at z and then change it to delta z and record the intensity pattern so this is a mechanical movement what you have to apply so this mechanical movement introduces lots of error if there is any pixel to pixel mismatch then you won't be able to get the phase value it will give you lots of errors so what my student did he said that i can use a liquid crystal variable plate where i can change the voltage so that corresponding to the change of voltage there will be change in the refractive index it means that will introduce path length so whatever is the required delta z i am controlling through the voltage so no physical movement of the camera is required i am introducing that much path length to the system without moving the camera so mechanical movement has been controlled here and then we can record it possible to optimize the path length yes it is it is or any path it is not that you have to go abruptly at uh, longer distances some smaller distances that is uh, what you have to do so this was the basic technique <laughs> it depends again on other parameters but maybe a half a millimeter or uh, some 500 micron 400 micron 100 micron is enough so this was one work another work was single shot setup so like in this case like in this case still we have to record two holo two interference uh, in uh, intensity patterns i1 and i2 and then we put everything into that equation and solve that so we, we came up with a new idea that okay we will not record two i1 i2 we will record only one intensity change the setup here we have this m1 and m2 these two mirrors these beams we are controlling the path control this path and you record only one intensity pattern in one shot you are basically recording two intensity patterns in one shot so you are not changing anything you have introduced some path length between them 
in the same way and recorded that intensity pattern. So it is called single sort TIE. So TIE had these problems, mechanical problems we have solved. Now even with the mechanical problems you have solved but you have to record two intensity patterns. So he came up with a new idea, okay. You don't have to record two intensity patterns. I can record the single pattern through this way so that I'm controlling the path and recording a single intensity and with that intensity I can retrieve the phase information. So these are some of those uh, results. Then there was another idea that suppose normally this TI works for, is better for the phase imaging. If the object is a phase object, then we have to retrieve its phase information. So TI is the best idea. So if the phase information and the available lighting condition is very poor, to low light illumination. How we can work with that? So this was another technique where this TI was applied. And you can see them. Oops. You can see that this is the normal intensity. Where the number of photons is 10 raised to 5. We have reduced it to 10 raised to power 4. So see the more information is here, but you don't you are not able to see any information here. You see it here, you can have to see it better here. Here you see some information, but in here you don't see any information. Hence the number of photos available to you is very less. Still you apply the TI, it gives you the page information. With the, all different conditions, you are able to get the phase information. So it was for low light condition. Some more results on that. They say lenslet array, and still no light information, but still we can recover the phase. <coughs> These were the contributions on this one. Here, he combined the digital holography and TI together and the first paper came by Professor Partha Banerjee only, his group only, that he combined this digital holography and TI together. So the problems associated with DS, digital holography, were overcome by TI and problems associated with TI was overcome by DS. So combination of these two can solve all the problems. So these are, there are many problems which you people can work with. You are a research scholar. If you are interested in the digital holography, you can go ahead and do this work. Many, many things to, to do and develop. This is what the experimental setup was. So some glue drop, some, some phase object he had, he had made and developed this one. So that is all for today. Now it is going to be 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. So we should move for the poster session. But it's wait there, the poster session. And then we will move tomorrow morning in the Senate Hall for listening to a, a distinguished speaker, Director General of the BIO. Or 11 o'clock, but you should come early. And for Sabanati will be there, so if you want to have more interaction, you can interact with him. Direct in it. In it. Second building. Second. We have him addressed in the thing. So for online participants, we have come to an end of the course now. Yes. And the uh, this uh, physical participants are going for the poster session. Unfortunately, you are far away from this place, so you won't be able to participate in the poster session. But of course, we'll send you the link. Please uh, attend tomorrow's validity session. And you also have received the uh, problems or the uh, 
homework was uh, what Professor Banerjee has given. So please submit the homeworks tonight so that we can uh, read you people also. So thank you so much. So everything is recorded. So I'm I'm uh, I have to leave now. Leave this. So, okay, you have all have to fill a uh, feedback form, so which I'll send you now. Have to send a feedback form. So, how did you like the course and other details? So, maybe I should. So, you people should rush to the Senate building. Senate building, you have seen? You have seen? No, no, no the main administrative building. You from here, even you go there, uh, you can take them. You have seen the Senate building. Yeah, so but you go to the right? opposite to the library. In the open corridor, the posters are being displayed. No problem, you can send, send it to uh, Have you seen the library? Same. Huh? Matlab, don't know Matlab. You can push to Yeah, give me a copy. No problem, no problem. So you, you mentioned that you have done with him. That's all. नहीं अभी तो सब वहाँ पे है पोस्टर के पोस्टर के बाद आके विजिट करें कोई दिक्कत नहीं नो नो आई वाज इन फिनलैंड सो दे हैड दे हैड परचेज और इट इट इस यू नो नो इट इस ओल्ड यूनिवर्सिटी Super interested about the doubt. I have done it in Google Colab. So uh, should I share the link or should I take a print out of it? Or should I paste it in Word? You so, paste in the Word and send and also share the link. Our uh, some of our departmental seniors, alumni, they joined the University ah, of Eastern. Ah, it's called University. Eastern University of Eastern Finland. Okay. And also there is some other university, which is Tempere University. Mm -hmm. Tempere is Tempere. very good university. So. Uh, yeah, temporary is it very doesn't good. Doesn't depend upon the good or best universities. Win.